Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're gonna talk about pneumatics. So we're gonna start off by talking about the general gas law, which states pressure one times volume one divided by temperature one will equal pressure two times volume two divided by temperature two. It looks a little bit intimidating, but these numbers here are just identifying numbers. They're not powers. They don't have any numerical value other than to identify which pressure or which volume or which temperature. And we can break down this general gas law into individual laws. For example, if you have a situation where the temperature of the gas is not changing, then we have what's called Boyle's law, which you can see is an inverse proportion. As the volume decreases, the pressure will increase. So if you compress air, so the volume decreases, the pressure will increase. If we have a situation where the volume isn't changing, for example, if you have gas in a closed cylinder and the volume isn't allowed to expand or contract, then we have what's called de Lussac's law, and it's a direct proportion. The pressure will increase as the temperature increases. And if you have a situation where the pressure is not changing, let's say we have a balloon that's just at atmospheric pressure, we have what's called Charles' law, and the volume and the temperature will be directly proportional. So that balloon will expand in volume as the temperature increases. So we can break it down into the individual gas laws or just learn this one and use whatever proportion of that gas law is relevant for the question. We'll do some examples and I'll give you some strategies to make this easier. But before we start, we have to have any temperatures and any pressures in what's called absolute units. So if your temperature is in Fahrenheit, you have to change it to the absolute temperature called Rankine. And the way that you do that is you add 460 to the Fahrenheit temperature. For pressure, if you have a gauge pressure which is indicated as pounds per square inch gauge, you have to add 14.7 to get the absolute pressure. Because on a gauge, it, it starts at zero when there's already an atmosphere of pressure, which is 14.7. So you have to change it to absolute before we can plug into the gas laws. I'll show you how in the examples. Our first example says 50 cubic inches of air at 30 PSIG is compressed to a volume of 20 cubic inches. What is its new pressure? So we take a look at our general gas law. And there's no mention of temperature, so we assume that the temperature didn't change. So we don't worry about the temperature. So this is the gas law we're gonna use. And I recommend before you start plugging numbers in, take a few minutes to put those values at the side and change any to absolute value that need to be changed. It doesn't matter which is P1, V1 and which is P2, V2. Just make sure you get the correct units together. So this volume goes with this pressure. So I'm going to call those one. So my volume one is 50 cubic inches. And pressure one, therefore, is 30 PSI G. That's a gauge pressure. We can't put that into our formula, so we need to change it to absolute by adding 14.7. Then pressure two, that's what we're trying to find. Our new volume is 20 cubic inches. When you're working with volume units, we don't have to change them to absolute. They're already fine. Just make sure that they're the same unit. Now we can plug these values into our formula. P1 is 44.7. V1 is 50. P2 we don't know. And V2 is 20. We do know that if we're compressing that air, the volume is getting smaller, the pressure should increase. In order to solve P2, we're going to multiply 44.7 times 50 
and divide by 20. We're dividing both sides by 20, so P2 get, is by itself. We get a value of 111.75, and the pressure unit that will come out of our formula will be absolute. So this will be PSIA. If we want to express it as a gauge pressure, maybe it makes more sense to express it as a gauge pressure, what we're going to do is subtract 14.7. and we get 97.05 PSIG. You can express your pressure in either unit unless it specifies a certain unit. Let's try another example. In our next example, it says a given volume of gas has a pressure of 120 PSIG at minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. What is the pressure at 200 degrees Fahrenheit if its volume has not changed? So if the volume hasn't changed, we can leave it out. And we have what's called gay lussacs law. Again, I'm going to take a few minutes to write all of my values at the side and change any that need to be changed to absolute units. So pressure one is 120 PSIG. I need to change that to absolute. So I add 14.7. Temperature that goes with that pressure is minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. I have to change that to absolute by adding 460. So that will be 420 Rankin. Pressure two, we don't know. And temperature two is 200 degrees Fahrenheit. I add 460 to change it to an absolute temperature of 660 Rankin. Once I've done that, now I can plug into my formula. So I'm going to have 134.7 over a temperature of 420 will equal the pressure I'm trying to find over a temperature of 660. In order to solve this, I cross multiply. So it's 420 times P2 will equal 134.7 times 660. And in order to solve for P2, I divide both sides by 420. So when I divide this side, it's gone. When I divide this side by it, I just now do that calculation. And I get 211.7. Again, we have to say that it's absolute. When, when you put your pressures into the formula, they have to be absolute. And when you get a resulting pressure from your formula, it's going to be absolute. If I want to know what the pressure is as a gauge pressure, I'm going to subtract 14.7 from that, and then I can write it as PSIG. Let's do one more example where we have pressure, volume, and temperature all changing. Our last example says five cubic feet of a gas has a pressure of 250 PSIG at zero degrees Fahrenheit. What is the pressure if the temperature increases to 150 degrees Fahrenheit and the volume decreases to one cubic foot? So we do have the volume changing, we do have the temperature changing, and we do have our pressure changing. So we're going to use the whole gas law. Again, we're going to write all of our values at the side and change any to absolute units that need to be changed. So we have a volume of five cubic feet. With a pressure of 250 PSIG, we have to change that to absolute by adding 14.7, so that will be 264.7 PSIA. And we have a temperature of zero degrees Fahrenheit. We change that to an absolute by adding 460, so it will be 460 Rankin. Then we want to find the pressure, so we don't know this pressure, when the volume decreases to one cubic foot and the temperature increases to 150 degrees Fahrenheit, again, we need to change that to an absolute temperature. And to do that, we add 460, so we'll get 610 Rankin. As long as both my volumes are in the same unit, I'm good to go. So we plug all these values in. Pressure one is 264.7. Volume one is five. 
temperature one is 460. So equal P2, which I'm trying to find, V2, which is one, divided by temperature two, which is 610. To solve this equation, I still cross multiply. So I'm gonna take 460 times P2 times one, which will be 460 P2. So that diagonal, the product of that diagonal will equal the product of this diagonal. So it'll be 264.7 times five times 610. In order to get P2 by itself, I need to divide both sides by 460. When I divide this side by 460, it will cancel. So I just do this calculation and P2 will equal 1755.1 PSIA. If we want to express that as a gauge pressure, we simply subtract 14.7. So don't be intimidated with lots of numbers. Just remember it's, the gas law is the same. You might leave out temperature, you might leave out volume, you might leave out pressure, depending on the question. If you take a few minutes to write all of this down at the side, you can ensure that all of your temperatures and pressures are in absolute units. And then you plug into the formula, cross multiply and solve. You might be working with metric units with your gas laws. So the next video is going to be these same gas laws, but everything will be in metric units.